Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Today we are talking about recognizing the pattern. So today we are going to do analysis. We're going to do recognition. Recognizing pattern. Can you rise and lift up your right hand? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I submit myself to your government in your son, the Christ Jesus. In the administration of the Holy Spirit I recognize that in this moment there is power there is life for me therefore I let go of my pride what I already know what I hold on to that can stand against me now every influence known or unknown seen or unseen in the past or in the present or even in the future I let all go I stand upon Jesus and I say Father let your plan be executed exactly according to your vision and according to your might and power and to your praise and glory I will testify and I will be your glory on the earth in the name of Jesus Christ Amen Glory to God, be seated, be seated Recognizing patterns I want to challenge you to connect the pattern of your family Let's go to the Bible. In the book of Genesis, in chapter 3, the summary of it is that Adam and Eve sinned against God. The greatest problem of Adam and Eve was that they sinned against God. They revolted. They yielded to the deception of the devil telling them be like God they broke away from order they broke the pattern the order of life for them but the real thing and the greatest nightmare of it all when God came to Adam and Eve he asked Adam where are you Adam said I heard you coming therefore I did what I hid myself for I was was naked verse 10 he answered I hid you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked so I hid naked and if you have never come if you have not yet come to the place of understanding the reality of sin what sin does sin as rebellion living in lawlessness doing what you like with your life in rebellion if you have not yet come face to face with the reality of what it has done to your life then you are not yet ready for salvation i challenge you go and read that in genesis chapter 3. these guys were in a garden they lacked nothing they were the gods of the garden reigning in the place of god they were in constant fellowship unbreakable fellowship with god unbroken fellowship with god these guys had bliss and they had peace everything was at peace with them pythons scorpions lions tigers nothing scared them and they were naked there was no sickness there was no sorrow there was no shame 
the man had nothing to hide from the wife the wife had nothing to hide from the woman from the man they went they were simply innocent everything was at peace to, with them everything deferred to them everything bowed to them god had told them have dominion and dominion they had and they enjoyed it but in one single moment the devil tricked them out of their garden what happened is that once they revolted against god their throne they could no longer reign they were hiding in a toilet can you imagine going to the house of the governor going to the governor's that beautiful palace and the governor hides in the toilet so sin drives you from your palace of destiny drives you from your garden every destiny god has created has gotten a, car, a garden every man has gotten a place of rulership where you are supposed to reign in peace and have things obey you sickness obeying you things but sin whether the past the present disrupts that order brings in poverty brings in all sorts of things that's what happened to adam when you read the bible is telling you your story Adam and Eve ran and hid in a corner and God says where are you God did not ask as if God did not see this is this is a way of presenting the Bible in human language for us to understand God saw but it's a way of trying to dramatize to let us know the conversation the connection between man and God and how God comes down to relate with us as we are he said I I hate you I hid because I discover i was naked and god was like surprised naked it was a strange language and he said god to ask him who told you that you were naked i didn't tell you like people will say this is my own sickness who told you that is your sickness when people say this is my own problem who told you but god didn't say that is it God says, do not fear what others fear. I'm sharing, I'm sharing revelation with you. So many things you call your own. They are not your own. What God did not give you, you don't have it. If you keep it, you are the enemy. So the issue of living in sin and the new doctrine of grace coming up because of a generation of rebellion and i dare to say many preachers who glory in what they call the doctrine of grace that pacifies the conscience of people to live in in sin and not feel feel guilty they have derailed and they are killing their own conscience and looking for a generation of those that can kill their conscience conscience to make them their disciples I am not afraid of saying that whoever is standing before me and say, say i will tell him if you have sin repent stop fooling yourself and others because there is a doctrine of grace that is coming up and making people feel that you can live in sin and not be sinful how did we even come to that kind of lie it's not about whether you feel guilty or not you are robbed of your destiny portion you cannot live in sin and reign ask Adam you cannot live in rebellion and be at peace you cannot you cannot I say you cannot can you if you can let me see your hand you run before anything follows you you run before anything follows you sin is sin whether you are a believer or unbeliever sin is rebellion against God's order and the consequence is that you leave your order you cannot be who you were made to be a wealthy man may be wealthy he has everything 
But if he sins, watch his family, watch his marriage. If he lives in adultery, so we have seen other one. If the problem is now, let's go. The real problem is, and he said, "Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from?" The man said, "The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it." No responsibility. A doctrine of irresponsibility. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this you have done, woman? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So neither Adam nor Eve sinned. The serpent sinned. They did not take responsibility therefore they did not have closure so what Adam and Eve handed over was the unfinished business of destiny go back to the story of the young man whose father smoked and died without closure he needs extraordinary in grace and stability he needs to be ready to die fighting because he has a battle to fight because if he does not fight there are two chances he will never have another son that means that will have wiped out an entire generation or a line I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about there are two chances there are two chances is either he ends the line of the father or he hands it over to another generation if he does not kill it because in life there must be closure tell somebody closure closure is coming to a point that it is done it is settled closure is when the husband and the wife recognizing that they have been fighting and quarreling they come to a point of saying one says i'm sorry um the way i talked to you was not right and he say yes i'm also sorry the way i responded was not right it is closure now if you look at so many families and i want you mothers if you had any problem with your marriage maybe you left or the man left you I want you to take a very serious decision to pray for your daughters and your sons please I'm begging you because there is an unfinished business if, it, if there is anybody in this place who understands what I'm talking about let me see your hand and I'm begging you and I want to warn you any young man listening to me you cannot judge a woman based on the story of the mother or the father but let me tell you something you have to deal with something if you are in love and God has revealed to you that the woman you will marry comes from a family that did not have closure deal with it before you move on you have to come to the place of a covenant with God breaking renouncing and taking a decision you know in moments like we are sitting down it is for destiny so when we are talking about waking the men and women of destiny this is not a normal time we sit in church and just say hallelujah it's a time of using the word of god going with the word of god in your pocket and in your heart to go and deal with your life so that as a mother i want to tell you there comes a time in marriage that abante is like you will take your head and you choose to be alive and let marriage go God didn't say you cannot be separated he didn't say if you, he said if you separate you may not you may not marry that's what the Bible says if it comes to a point of taking your life and you know the only way is to walk away and be alive and face life 
it's an unfortunate thing one will one one does not ever ask that one should come to that point i pray none of you will come to that point Amen. but should for any reason anybody has come to that point then you know you have to deal with the next generation as a mother you have to intentionally speak into those children speak to those children share with those children pray with those children let them in am i talking to somebody bring in the gospel as the foundation and so that you and your daughter you and your son can stand on the same ground and say whatever was the mistake of my father or my mother i'm not part of it i renounce it i reject it i refuse to subscribe to it i don't belong there and then the next thing is beginning you watch out for any tendency because it will come so lack of closure brings about the continuity of a fight it becomes intergenerational it becomes a family pattern adam did not own up adam did not face it adam did not fight the fight if adam i'm sure the bible will have been a different book if adam upon being discovered by god took responsibility stood before god i'm sorry i failed you i'm sorry and the wife said i'm so sorry i i, I don't know is there any other way the same god who looked for something to cover their nakedness that same god will have forgiven them and then the story of the bible will have been a different story lack of repentance that is why the kind of gospel we are preaching now that it is taken for granted everybody is born again everybody is a believer because it comes to church i am in grace family i am in these I, that's not salvation the, do you know it is not salvation do you know i am these i am that i'm going to be this till the end to do that's not salvation doesn't matter what matters is christ the new life sin is a problem but the greatest problem we are facing is sin has been accepted and normalized customized christianized christianized such that it is no longer a problem it's not a problem so there is a now a new way of teaching a generation to to bypass bypass sidestep sin so don't worry about sin when to somebody talking about guilty consciousness you cannot as a christian be having guilty consciousness what of if a man is living in adultery shouldn't he feel guilty ah what is wrong with you to you, you say somebody shouldn't have guilty consciousness have you found out what somebody is guilty of say if you have repented and god has forgiven you don't feel guilty that's okay but don't stand in a place and make a general statement guilty consciousness there are people who are going out with people's husbands in a congregation that people are looking at people's wives in a congregation he said don't be having guilty consciousness it means do it don't feel guilty is that not the doctrine of satan that's why a generation is lame that's why a generation is without power that's why church is full of people without glory without presence that's why we have beautiful songs but souls are not one oh in the pentecostal circle i'm beginning to understand one beautiful thing so that in a program like this we, we call for altar call and then make altar call at the end of it say 100 people so we can report 100 people gave their life to christ 100 souls were one are you sure they are one sorry oh my background is different too are you sure they are one it is god who will know eventually who has been one we said ten, 10 souls took a decision yeah we pray pray in the name of Jesus. every day as we are saying now that the decision we take because the problem we have because you hear something like this and something pricks you and you go out perhaps maybe you the environment around you everything around you and what you hear and everything that thing collapses and you just feel like 
somebody is telling you lie and the result is people are pursuing solution everywhere yet they are the carriers of the solution but they cannot bring about the solution because they are lame they are blind they are eagles without wings they are champions without feet sin cripples sin blinds sin makes a caricature of great champions great destinies are buried in the shallow graves of sin adam and if they were the good thing is this adam could not bring a closure you can bring closure now before we go too far let's do something let's look at the next generation of adam genesis chapter 4 verse 1 to 9 adam lay with his wife if sorry and she became pregnant and gave birth to cain she said with the help of the lord i have brought forth a man later she gave birth to his brother abel now abel kept flocks and cain worked the soil in the curse of time cain brought some of the fruit of the soil as an offering to the lord but Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. You can see the next generation is already an angry generation. When relationship with God has been broken, what is left is a broken heart, angry heart, angry beds. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do, if you do what is right, will you do will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. And now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him intentionally. Why did he kill him? Look at the next verse. We'll come to talk about that and we'll leave. The next verse. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know. He replied, am I my brother's keeper? Now see, no closure, no admittance of guilt. I didn't do anything wrong. Now, can you see a generation of Cain? Generation that does not take responsibility. Where did they get it from? From the father. There was no closure in the generation of Adam. They have handed over the generation of Cain. No closure. No responsibility. A pattern is already taking place. Now, this is the birth of witchcraft. This is the first case of witchcraft in the Bible. Witchcrafts, and I want to let you know, I talk about it a lot. Witchcraft is not some spirit of people who go out at midnight and fly to Russia and come back 4 a.m. While the body is still lying down in that place. Witchcraft, that is witchcraft. But it does not completely embody the totality of witchcraft. There are many witches who don't fly at night at all. They don't even have dreams. Witchcraft is hating the light, hating light, hating excellence, hating beauty, hating glory. A witch or a wizard is somebody who is angry because somebody else is smiling, somebody else is happy. Whether they are in nursery school or in government house, they are witches and wizards. They can be elders in church. They can be bishops. They can be deacons. They can be pastors. They can be priests. Reverends of different kind. They are wizards. And their female counterpart, my friend had to remind me, they are witches. So if right now, your friend is about getting married and you feel like, you pomba. I will, and you don't feel good about it I'm sorry you need deliverance don't worry about who gave it to you
if in the office your colleague dresses well and is always elegant and elegant and with poise and then each time she comes and your face drops sorry I wish People come around and they like to chat with the other one and nobody talks to you and because of that you feel very very angry sorry <laughs> you are in the class together and somebody first second third when question is asked before a question lands somebody raises their hand and you have to be struggling to even understand the question talk less of the answer <laughs> and then because of that you take somebody's book or you try to do whatever it is that you do sorry <laughs> wizards and witches who make sure they make they make sure that nobody sees him people can have genuine reason to talk to him they shut the door they just they just make sure you don't see him those are wizards and if i were to give a serious advice to you when god raises you be careful don't bring your close brothers and sisters to work with you settle them far away people from your village bless them keep them far away sorry sorry they may help to bury you A lot of people who do things with impunity, the only reason is they come from the governor's side. Be careful. Witchcraft is a very terrible thing in this part of the world. Idiocracy. Idiocracy. Bad heart and bad will. You see it in church. I have met it on the altar. I have met it on the pulpit. I have met it on the communion table. And it is combined with hypocrisy hypocrisy means in church we greet people but we wish they would not come back to church the next time they should die in ministry somebody's posted to a place or somebody's doing well and when they talk about that person is doing well some people are just so angry because somebody's doing well some people the only time they are happy is that somebody has failed a generation came the first witches and wizards these things are serious all of us it is good we just refrain refrain that means there are no witches here all of us are holy and it's a good thing it's a good thing to be holy remain holy in jesus name the issue is that there was no closure can i give you assignment today check out the patterns in your family what battles are you fighting find out who and who fought it before that means there are people fought it and they didn't have closure and you are the one to bring closure and it's important find out patterns as a young woman find out questions you know ask questions my my the generation of my father in those days before you marry any family they people don't do that now much many parents are just once they say the man can has a car has a house it's okay for you have it a young friend a friend and an avocado who was a warrior what more than you for for a button or what it am you look for me car get back it's a woman look for me so many mothers have killed their daughters you have a safe and no more who sell their daughters into hands of arm robbers in the time of my father you say you want to go come and marry they say go first so they will send they will send in they will they will do all, do all, do all, find out every detail about that family so our ancestors even at the traditional level understood the issues of pattern now 
what I will add to that, it does not matter that because somebody came from a very a particular family, that person cannot be married. The reason of the gospel ministry is to face facts. So if you come from a family that has not yet had closures in matter, that is where the, the body of Christ, the gospel ministry comes in. Don't move on until you deal with the closure. Bring it to a closure. Deal with what had not been dealt with. Otherwise, you'll be, you'll be caught in the whirlwind of that problem. you become a problem yourself. Am I talking to somebody? Get filled with the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost in you, the flesh will crumble in marriage. After two days, you begin to desire the younger sister of your wife. The flesh is blind and deaf and dumb. Eat your organ, one take it. Just guys say this flesh has nothing to offer. It is a spirit that gives life. So if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, you are an accident waiting to happen. So the issue of coming to church and avoiding Christ, avoiding salvation, avoiding being touched, avoiding being broken, you are preparing for destruction. Today, don't leave this place. Settle with God. And God will change your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me just say, just the last one. David had just one problem. And that problem was with a beautiful woman. Her name is Bathsheba. Go and read the entire story of David. The only problem of David is that he saw a beautiful woman. And I have been saying it each time this thing comes up. He said, don't blackmail or don't at any point point accusing finger at beautiful women. It was not a beautiful woman that was a problem. It was the lost in the heart of David. That was the only problem he had. But do you know what happened? His son Solomon ended in shame. The, the most glorious man in the scripture who ended in shame because of women. A pattern. A pattern. David had issue with women. We don't know details. The issue of Bathsheba became something that could be of a problem and a scandal. There was a tendency. A tendency. And the next generation multiplied it. See, if you, if you look at 1 Kings chapter 11 from verse 1 to 8, that one is for your personal story. The last part of it, verse 3 says, He had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wife led him astray. It is not money that led Solomon astray, it is not wisdom, it is not government. Women. His father and because of that the kingdom was divided in the next generation there is something called ancestral pattern in our time there are some people when they want they hear ancestral they say that is not in the bible they just stop leave it <laughs> the bible is a book of revelation it's not a book of verses <laughs> yeah, because some people say, where is it written in the Bible? The Bible is primarily the book of Revelation, not a book of verses. <laughs> Every verse expresses a revelation. So there are revelations that are not captured in one particular verse or the other verse, but that is on the, the underlying thing that is played out. In a chapter in a book so look at solomon what what a man started looking from a roof seeing a beautiful woman brought in the beautiful woman a beautiful oh, the woman eventually produced produced solomon and solomon produced one thousand women one woman produced solomon and solomon brought one thousand which means one equals to one thousand equation now 
let's end it with Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. This one is a beautiful pattern. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother. The faith which first did what? Lived in your grandmother Lois and is in your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now lives now see pattern which means pattern ancestral pattern is not all negative it depends on the ancestry that you come from so who was your father who was your grandfather those of you call it koko ite koko ma ite ite mama who was ite now that you are ite ite who was ite ite who was ma what, what is the pattern they have left is it the pattern that timothy has inherited the pattern of faith the scripture says without faith no man can please the lord so patterns in family patterns of brokenness in relationship patterns of dishonesty there are some people who cannot do business with them the father was a dishonest man they are dishonest and so when you play into their hands even if you are their friend they will they will stop you in the back people who backstab sisters destroy the marriage of their own sisters fathers destroying their daughters in law patterns now we are not here to accuse the past we are here to correct the past so we are not here to name witches and wizard to to say my father was a bad man leave your father alone this is your season rise <laughs>